Hi guys, welcome back to week three puppy school. So today I'm gonna to go through teaching your dog how to stay or wait, doing a health check from head to tail and teaching them their recall. Getting your dog to stay or wait, whatever word you prefer. When you're getting your dog to stay, you can do this at dinner time with their food bowl. Every time you try and get it to the ground and your dog stands up or moves, bring yourself back up with the bowl and do that five times if needed. And then if they're still not sitting there waiting, pop the bowl up for five minutes, come back, try again. The next time they do get it no matter what, but hopefully they're sitting there a lot nicer for you. And each day that will get better and better. So you can do that at breakfast and at dinner time. It is really important to give your dog a release word. So okay or go are two good ones to use as they're nice and quick and a click of the finger or a sweep of the hand or a point is a really good release cue as well. When you're starting to get your dog to stay, you want to stand at them with your treat and just get them to sit in that position for a bit longer. So five, 10 seconds, count in your head, then release that treat to them and say the word. And then the next step would be taking one step away, but keeping your hand at them. Second step, taking one step away and coming back into them. Remain eye contact with your dog. And as soon as your dog looks away, come back into them and restart. Third step. Trying to take a couple of steps away and coming back into them. Always take your time with this as every dog is different. For the stay, I want you to aim for say a hallway length or a room or your backyard length. Once you've mastered that, you've done really well and then you can start trying on a rope out in a park where there's more distractions and things like that. When you are teaching your dog how to stay, you should always go back into them as they're released. So then they're not used to having only a couple steps away before they do get up towards you. So teaching their recall and their stay at two different times until they're 100% with both of them, and then you can incorporate them together. Listen for the clicking. That is someone behind the camera clicking to make noise to try and distract Zena. And as you can see, she is still very focused. Today I will just be using a dummy to show you how to do a health check on your dog or puppy. Now, when you are doing a health check on your dog, make sure if they do feel uncomfortable at any point or are trying to bite you, just stop, do it later. The best time to do this is when they are a little bit sleepy and wanting a cuddle from you. While you are doing your health checks, please make sure you're not being rough with your puppy or dog. So no pulling the tail, no pulling the ears, cranking their mouth open, throwing their legs up or anything like that. It is all gentle behavior. You can be giving them a treat as well and lots of praise while you are doing it. So they do like you checking their health. And especially if they go into a vet clinic, they just think it's a normal part of their daily lifestyle. To start off with for the health check, we're just going to be checking their ears. So if your dog has floppy ears like this one, you want to be able to fold them over, check inside, making sure that there's no dirt or any gunk in there. If your dog has upright ears, you can just be massaging the outside and looking inside from there. If you can see any brownness in your dog's ears, what you want to do is use a little makeup round that you can just get from the supermarket. They're nice and soft, they're flat, they're not as fluffy as a cotton ball, and also you never want to use a cotton tip because you might be sticking it in their ears and then they might move and you might stab them. So always just use something really soft, even a little tissue as long as it's not going to break up. So what you would want to do is just hold it in your hand and all you're going to be doing is rubbing in the ears, nice and softly massaging them, just so your dog likes it. Someone could be giving them treats while you're doing that. If you come back with any brownness or anything like that in the ears, you want to just keep cleaning them. Now what you can use to clean your dog's ears is an actual ear cleaner called Epiotic. 
There's plenty more out there as well, but this is the one I use. And all you can just use a cup of warm water, teaspoon of salt, mix it together, pop your little cotton ball in, squeeze it out so it's not wet, and then you're just wiping out those ears. Now you're only going to be cleaning out those ears if they are dirty. If they're nice and clean, all you're doing is massaging them, just getting your dog used to that feeling of having their ears touched in case they ever do need an ear clean or go to a vet for any medication. If your dog's ears are dirty, what you want to be doing is cleaning them every second day until they are nice and clean for them. It is quite normal for a puppy to have some brownness in there, but if it keeps occurring or if they're really smelly or quite thick consistency, that is when I would go to the vet as there might be an ear infection going on there. If your dog has upright ears, they're not prone for ear infections as the sun and air can get in and dry them out. If your dog has floppy ears, the sun and air can't dry them out when they get wet. So if your dog likes the beach or going in the water, when they do that, especially if they have floppy ears, you do want to dry them out. And you can just use your makeup round again, popping it in there, soaking up any excess water, just where you can reach, you know, by sticking it in there, but just rubbing it in, soaking up that excess water and drying them out. You can also use like a gym towel that's a bit softer and thinner than a normal towel, but anything just to dry them out to try and prevent an ear infection occurring. The next one is your dog's eyes. So knowing what colour eyes your dog has, whether they've got two the same or one different, or one could be like a merle in the middle, just knowing what's normal for your dog. So if anything occurs, you're on top of it. So if your dog's eye goes red, you're, you'll know straight away. If they're weeping and they're not normally weeping, you'll know. What you can do is use warm salty water again. So one cup of warm water, teaspoon of salt, mix it together. Use your little makeup round, wipe out their eyes if they are a little bit red or weeping. If that keeps occurring though, you will need to go to the vet because it is an eye problem and it could cause an ulcer or damage those eyes. So it's very important to go to the vet clinic if you are struggling with your dog's eyes. Also with your smaller dogs normally, some of them will have weeping eyes and they'll get that staining around that muzzle. You can again wipe out your dog's eyes with that warm salty water or you can use your non-fragrant baby wipes and just wipe those away. Your dog's nose. So making sure you know what colour your dog's nose is. If your dog has a lighter colour nose, so a light brown or a pink, you do want to be using sunscreen or being very mindful of the sun for their nose as they are more prone and likely to get skin cancer. So you can use baby sunscreen, never adult sunscreen, it's too toxic for your pets. I would be more so using a pet friendly sunscreen or zinc as it does seep in a lot quicker and it lasts longer for your dog and it's, it's safer. If everyone wants to just touch their dog's nose, see if it's wet or dry, knowing what's normal for your dog. So if your dog's nose is normally wet, they might be a very much water orientated dog, so head in the water well all the time or going in the dam or swimming pool. If your dog's nose is normally dry, they might just not be as water orientated as the others. It's just knowing what's normal for your dog. So if your dog's nose, for instance, starts running uncontrollably all the time, that is abnormal for your dog. Or if your dog's nose is really dry and cracking, that might be unnormal for your dog. So it's just knowing what isn't, isn't normal for your dog and when to react and possibly go to the vet clinic if needed. Everyone wants to lift up their dog's gums and have a look and see what colour your dog's gums and mouth is. If your dog does not want you to do that, please stop and do it at a later date when they're a little bit sleepier or are um, more willing to. So just lifting up that gum, checking what colour they are. Dogs will range in all different colours, so from a reddy colour to a, a pink. Um, so some dogs might be a lighter pink compared to others, or you might have two dogs at home, check both of them and see the difference. Other dogs might have like brown dots on there or black dots. It's just their skin colouring. It's like having freckles um, where it's just on their gums. So why we're looking at that is if, if your dog is unwell or not getting enough oxygen in or choking, their gum colours will change. So if your dog goes white, grey or really light pink, that's when you want to start looking at what's going on with your dog. Do we need a race to the vet visit if they're choking or, or struggling to breathe? Or if they're not well, 
let's have a look at that. Why aren't they unwell? We might need to go to the vet visit as well. While we're at your dog's mouth, you want to be looking at their teeth as well. So if you're looking at a puppy's teeth, they will have their puppy deciduous teeth going into their adult teeth. So they will start losing their baby teeth at four months to six months of age. By six months of age, they should have their adult teeth. Now they do have 42 teeth compared to a 32 that humans do have. So that is 20 on the top and 22 down the bottom. Some dogs won't have as many. So your smaller breeds like pugs or um, bulldogs, they might be missing teeth because of their, their uh, jaw structure but normally they will have those 42 teeth all up. Looking after your dog's teeth. So by six months of age, they should have their adult teeth. So while we're still puppies and still getting those teeth in and they're losing their baby teeth, we should be looking after them now. So they get used to a routine and by the time they get their adult teeth at six months of age, they're already used to that and they're comfortable with you opening up their mouth, touching their teeth, looking at them and doing that routine for them. So gold standard for your dog's dental care is brushing their teeth. So by the age of three, 80% of dogs and cats have some form of dental disease. So you do want to start now and not let them get to that point. So there's dental procedures, teeth getting taken out, things like that, that do cost a bit of money. So if you can do something about it and not have a procedure or a vet visit, why not do it now? So the first step to brushing your dog's teeth is actually just getting them used to a, a toothpaste. Now it is toxic to use human toothpaste or Listerines and things like that. So please don't do that. It is designed for us to spit out whereas a dog is going to eat it. Now there is different brands you can buy, but these are the three that I have. So I have a vanilla flavored one. As you can see. Then there's a poultry flavoured one and then a beef flavoured one. Now they are all different textures as well. So the vanilla flavoured one, this one here, is a little bit thicker. The poultry flavoured one is a little bit sticky and the beef flavoured one is a little bit gritty. So it does depend on what your dog likes and what they will be willing to use in their mouth. You can just use peanut butter as well to get them used to it and then transition them onto a toothpaste. But if you go to your pet shop or vet clinic, there is plenty of different flavors you can choose from. So you can choose from chicken to beef, cheese, peanut butter, you can get fresh breath ones. So whatever your dog likes, that is where you would start. So what you want to do first is when you have decided what flavour your dog would like, you get a pea-sized piece on your finger. Just doesn't have to be big. And just get your dog to lick it off. Now, if your dog does do that willingly, that means they're accepting that flavour and they don't mind it. The next step, it, once you get to that point, is actually putting your finger in their mouth and just touching around their gums, touching their teeth, letting them still lick it off you until they get used to that texture and flavour. Then the next step would be moving on to a toothbrush. So whether that be a finger toothbrush or an actual toothbrush. So the finger toothbrushes look like this. Goes on your finger. Um, when the, your dog does get used to you having a finger in there, these ones are quite easy to go from because they're already used to that. The other step is a toothbrush. Now they are a two-faced toothbrush, so you just go over their teeth and you don't have to do the round motions back and forth. It's just once over, you've got all the sides. It makes it nice and easy for you. Now, silver standard is rinses and water additives or wipes. 
But if you are doing those daily or twice daily, that can be brought back up to gold standard. Or if you're starting from a puppy and you can do that pretty much every second day and still be gold standard because nothing is going to build up in the mouth. So rinses, there's one called hexa rinse. It is like our Listerine, you squirt it in their mouth, they use their tongue to move it around and it coats their teeth up to 12 hours from plaque and tartar building up. Also there's wipes and they just look like your makeup round. You pop it on your finger, wrap it around like it would be a finger toothbrush and you wipe it and coat those teeth yourself. It does have a bit of a grit to it, so it does wipe anything caked on their teeth off. But if you're doing that from puppyhood, you could do that every second day as well. If you start later on in life, you would need to do it once a day. Also with water additives, you can buy them at your pet shop or vet clinic. It's a little cap full of the liquid. You pop it in their water. If you're doing that from day one from now as well, it just stops any plaque and tartar building up every time they drink that water. Bronze Standard. Bronze Standard is all your chews. So you can get from the pet shops or your supermarket. So from the supermarket, you can get dentist sticks and you can also get things that you can put the dentist sticks in to last longer. So you can buy Kong products and they fit nicely in them. So it lasts longer for them to chew and use their teeth. Or you can buy these ones, it goes in the middle. They have to get to it, so it becomes an activity toy as well as cleaning your dog's teeth. The other brands that I use are Greenies. They look like a little toothbrush or Oribet. Now, if you were doing this from six months of age, you could do that every second day and it would still be fine. If you're doing it later on in life, you would need to do it once a day. Puppies can't have those sort of items until they do have their adult teeth. So you would want to be trying to just touch their mouth and things like that, getting them used to something in the meantime. The other toy product I recommend are the Kong Dental Range. So they look like this. They come in all the different sizes for your dogs. They've got the grooves in them. So every time your dog's teeth goes into that space, it's cleaning their teeth. As long as your dog is chewing with all their teeth, it cleans their teeth like brushing them. So it's a really good alternative if you don't want to sit there and brush your dog's teeth. So if they do use all their teeth to chew on this and um, you use toothpaste on it, it goes up to gold standard as well. So the next one is your dog's feet. So if you just want to lift your dog's feet up, touching them nicely, or if your dog's sitting on you, just touching them nicely, never pulling at them or poking them in their um, foot pads or anything like that, but just touching them nicely, getting them used to it, and having a look at their nails as well. Now it is really important to get your dog used to having their feet touched as if they do tread on something that's hurt them, it is quite easy to have a look in there yourself. But if your dog's not used to you touching their feet, they can be quite sensitive and not want you to do that. So the thing what we're looking at is their, their nails. So just like our nails, they've got their pink part and then you've got your white tips. We can only cut down to that pink part. So if you go too close to that pink part, it will hurt. Just like us, if we go too, too close to that pink part, it hurts us. It's a bit sore for a couple of days. With the dogs, if you cut to the pink part, it will bleed and it's like actually ripping off your whole nail. So please, if you don't know how to cut your dog's nails, ask someone or take them to a pet shop or vet clinic and they can do them for you. Especially if you have black nails, it is a lot harder. I'll pop up some pictures just to show you where you can cut, but be mindful. If you don't know how to do it, ask someone first. Instead of cutting your dog's nails, if you do have a bigger dog that you're walking all the time on the concrete or if you've got pavement at home or a concrete driveway, you can play or walk them on that and you'll actually hear them filing down like a big nail file. So that's the easiest way to get out of cutting your dog's nails. If you do normally have a big dog, they never normally need a nail clip because they are getting walked regularly. They are a bit heavier on their feet as well and they do file them down a lot easier than your smaller dogs. 
So sometimes your smaller dogs might need a nail clip every six months, but that's just something to keep, keep an eye on. If they are getting too long or if they're getting caught on anything, that's when you should cut them. The next one is your dog's coats. How often do you think you should wash your dog? The correct answer is as little as possible with shampoo. They can have rinses with warm water, but with shampoo as little as possible. So for my dogs, they get once a year, if that. Um, regular brushings and rinses, that's all my dogs do get. So just be mindful of the more times you put chemicals on your dog or wash them, it's stripping their natural oils and can cause problems with their skin like dry skin or having excess oil or also it can cause your dog to have a smell about them as well. If you have a dog that sheds, they naturally get rid of any excess oil or dirt through that shedded hair. If you've got a poodle, they don't shed. So all that dirt and excess oils can stay on their skin and cause some issues, but they might need some regular washes. With the shampoos you use, I would also recommend only using natural shampoos. So this one's a really good one here. So this one's Derm Care Natural Shampoo. You can get other brands from your pet shops or vet clinics, but those are the ones I do recommend. Um, you can also get leave-in conditioners. So you can just spray that on them, rub it in if they do start to smell. My rule is if my dog starts to smell, they get a really long brush. If that doesn't work, a rinse off. If not, a spray with the leave-in conditioner. And then final, the final step would be a full wash. So brushing your dog. If you take your dog to the beach regularly or they roll in dirt, these little ones are really good to get any excess dirt or sand off them. So normally I have two and what you can do is just rub them back and forth, get all that sand off them or dirt and then you can give them a proper brush or a rinse off if needed as well. If you do take your dog to the beach, it is really vital to get all that sand off, especially under the arms. If they're wearing a harness or a collar, that sand can rub and cause abrasions and lesions. So that's really important to get that off them. The other brush I recommend are the shedders. So sheddies, deferminators, this one's from Kmart, nice, nice and cheap $12, does the same job. But with these ones, it's like a shaver, so you never go against the hair, it's always with, and you don't pull too hardly. So it's just a nice little brush going from head to tail, nice and softly, and it strips all that loose hair out. So you could be sitting there brushing your dog for quite a while and still be getting more hair off them. But regular brushing them at least once a week will help that shedding and also the hair around the house. So the last thing for your pet health check today is their tail. So what you wanna do is just make it a part of their pat, lifting up their tail, getting them used to just having that tail moved. And if you've got a pug or a bulldog that doesn't really have a tail, just touching around that bum area, giving them a little butt scratch or um, a good little pat. But that one is, so in case they go to the vet clinic, the thermometer does not go in their mouth. So a lot of dogs don't like their tail being lifted. It is quite confronting and scary for them. But if they think they're just getting a pat, someone could be giving a treat at the other end, um, they're not going to worry too much. Your dog's anal glands. So they are a, a gland that discretes liquid and a very bad odor. Your dog will rub themselves against the ground when they are trying to release them or if they're having problems with their anal glands. They could also be rubbing themselves along the ground if they have worms. So make sure they are up to date with their worming. But most of the time when they're doing this, it is their anal glands. So you will need to get them expressed at your vet clinic. Sometimes you will need to get them expressed often. Others will express them naturally. If your dog runs out the front yard that they shouldn't be doing or they grab something that they shouldn't and you need to get them back to you as quickly as possible, don't yell at them like they're in trouble. They'll keep running or they'll ignore you. You need to get super excited and make yourself the most excitable thing in the world for your puppy or dog to come back to you. When they do come back to you, 
All you're doing is giving them praise, cuddles, treats, whatever it is to get them super excited about coming back to you. You just forget what they were doing. Teaching the dog their recall. The first step is to play little games in the backyard. So when they are distracted on a toy, you try and get them back to you. When your dog is 100% coming back to you in the backyard when they're distracted on something or their toy, that's when you would go to a park where there's not too many people around at this point, pop them on a rope to your desired length, and as soon as that rope is about to go tight, you call them back to you. And you continually do this until they're 100%. Their recall can take up to two years to master, so don't think it's a quick thing that you're going to be able to let them off free reign at the beach or the park and they're going to come back to you because some days they might get distracted on another dog or a scent or a bird in the trees. So just please be mindful that it can take up to two years to master. Third step is when you can finally trust your dog to take them off the rope and off the lead and let them run around freely and call them back. If you do take them off lead, continue to play little games with them. So letting them only go like five steps, call them back, 10 steps, call them back. So they get used to, they can't just run off and leave you. They do have to stay in a certain radius from you. Go, Zach. go, go, let's go. Zah, Zah, quick. Good girl. Always remember to get super excited when you're trying to get your dog back to you. You can use a squeaky toy, you can use a rattling of the treats or a clicking noise, whistling. But the best way to do it is just with your voice so they get used to that. Going super excitable like this. Yay, 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 come on, quick, 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 come back to me. Yay, 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 yay. And being as silly as possible. Thank you for watching week three of Puppy School. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions, please message me.